Rula Sayaf. So Rula made, made it. Her images came at 2017. Her computer was half broken, but here she is. It's typical for computer scientists. And she's she a computer scientist, geek. Just the deadline, or maybe a little bit. Yeah, pushing. Deadline. You see, I don't yeah. have any more hair <laughs> because of. Oh, that going to be my future. <laughs> no. <Lovely>. Rula <laughs> Saya, 400 seconds, a PhD in computer science, leading us where I don't know. I haven't yet seen the images. <laughs> Somewhere about privacy and sensitive data and, okay. and the challenges we face, but hopefully that would be put in a very nice and entertaining way. Super. So. so let's welcome Rula while I begin to launch the system. Are you ready? <laughs> yep. All right. So I just want to start by saying like privacy has been there since ever, of course. We see in this painting how privacy violation was, I mean, really deemed severe and it was punished. That was the way to protect people from violations. The goddess here punishes the violator and and yeah, and, and, and that was it. But in our days, we have much more uh, advanced ways to protect ourselves. So many, so many technological uh, solutions are offered for us. The problem is that the solutions are many and the risks are many as well, that it's really, really complicated for us to know which, uh, which solution to use properly. So one of the ways to be completely safe is just to hide our data, hide ourselves, not share anything, and we'd hopefully be safe. Uh, but then the problem is that we wouldn't be able then to enjoy the, the, the pleasure of using the internet and all the technology that we have our, uh, nowadays. Uh, so the alternative is to have some sort of control over our data, be able to know or control who our data go to, for which reason, uh, and who our data shouldn't be, uh, shouldn't be accessed by and so on. So that is more like the, the approach that technologies uh, offer these days. Uh, the problem is that some data could be very simplistic and we could be able to identify different items. And I'm here assuming that red smarties are sensitive. So we'd be able to simply control and protect these sensitive items. And the rest may not be as sensitive. So that the, 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 the control problem is not quite complex in this case. But we noticed that data is becoming more complex and it's interrelated, interconnected. We cannot necessarily and easily separate sensitive data from not sensitive data and so on. Uh, so that makes the problem of controlling, uh, controlling our data uh, even much more complex. To add to that, complexity is increasing by the fact that we are not even able to know who's monitoring us or who can access our data. So at the same time, we could have multiple uh, parties that are monitoring us when we're, uh, when we're accessing a, a website, for instance. Um, and then for this reason, uh, we thought like, okay, we need probably some intelligent brains, some artificial intelligent uh, approaches or ways of thinking to try and see how we could help people uh, manage and control their sensitive data. These are the, the sensitive items that we cannot really see easily. So we decided to go to Bing and tell them, OK, give us your big data set of 200 million items so that we would try and do some um, intelligent work and analyze what, what, what data is sensitive. Um, uh, yeah, what data is sensitive that people search for on a daily basis. And then we had access to uh, how people uh, manage their search history. So uh, we were able to see what items were deleted and wh which items were kept in the search history. And the assumption was, of course, that if an item is deleted from the history, then it indicates some sensitivity of the, of the item. But of course, not every item that is deleted from the history is deleted because of its sensitivity. Uh, but but we went we went we we, we stuck to to, to this uh, to this assumption and we said if an item is deleted then there must be some hidden sensitivity in that. So we put the data into some intelligent algorithmic machinery, and we just uh, asked the algorithm to kindly look for the pattern of what makes data sensitive and tell us what parameters affects um, affects a search query to to be deemed as sensitive or not to be deleted or not. And we were interested, actually, to see whether the 
common knowledge that we have in general about topics that are sensitive because general like topics related to adult health finance religion are deemed sensitive so we wanted to see if this common world knowledge would apply actually after uh, our algorithm would tell us the pattern so we 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 saw that Actually, yeah, the, 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 the topics, certain topics uh, are sensitive by their nature, and that is uh, more or less what the common world knowledge says. So adult is, is sensitive and health is sensitive, but other items actually were deemed sensitive, and like celebrities, for instance, that was something new. We also found out uh, that context does affect the, the perception of sensitivity to a very high degree. So if someone is at work, then their perception of sensitive items may vary uh, to when they are at home, for instance. Another parameter that seems to uh, play a significant role in perception of sensitivity is time. So if, if an item is searched for at night, then most probably this item is sensitive. And if it's searched for during the day or during weekdays, then most probably it's less sensitive. So that was interesting. And then the I guess that's my favorite. So we, seem, we see that uh, the type of services people use seem to affect their perception of sensitivity. So those who use Facebook are not necessarily concerned with managing their sensitive data when they are compared to people using uh, Windows Live, for instance, or other services. And another finding was that uh, when people use, uh, for instance, an anonymization tool or tools to, to manage their privacy when accessing the web, then they seem to have some sense of security and protection that they do not necessarily manage their sensitive data as one would expect. So all, uh, all these parameters also contrib contribute nicely to how uh, the context, how the context affects sensitivity of data. But the most interesting finding is that people who work, for instance, for religion uh, institutions, government institutions, seem to be also very, very concerned about managing their sensitivity. And with that, we just infer that sensitivity is not only limited by the, like, or de decided by the topic, but it's decided by many other feat uh, features and aspects and context. And we really need to stick to the very holistic view to be able to provide proper tools. Thank you, Rula.